Hey guys, Chelsea Nicole here, and in today's video, I'm sharing how I edit in Lightroom for sharp portraits using the details panel so that you can get more professional editorial looking images that pop without having an overly processed or unnaturally crispy look. This video is part two in a series I'm doing on how to get sharper portraits. In part one, we talked all about how to nail focus in camera to give you a better, cleaner image file to work with when we get to this editing phase. But if you haven't seen that already, definitely check it out after this one and I'll include a link below. Also, I'm super excited to announce that coming up, I'm gonna be hosting a free live online workshop called From Work That's Tired to Work That's Desired and Hired. And I would love to invite you to come join Join and hang out with me live. In it, I'm going to be sharing the five things that have made the biggest impact on my photography, helping me fill my calendar with my dream clients and build a successful six-figure photography business that I absolutely love. I've seriously been living my dream, you guys, and it is my biggest goal to help others do the same especially during these crazy times. So if this sounds like something that's fun for you, you're invited. Come hang out with me. I'll include a link below. All right, let's dive into Lightroom. So coming into Lightroom, this is the photo that we're gonna be working on. And sharpening is one of the last steps I take after dialing in my basic adjustments and color toning of my image. So I'm starting with those edits already applied. But in case you wanna see other videos sharing my full process for editing portraits similar to this one, I'll link them up in the description. Now for 95% of my images, I actually don't apply much sharpening. I have a minimal amount built into an actual preset I use that's applied to all my images upon bringing them into Lightroom. And this significantly speeds up my editing workflow because I'm only really needing to make these adjustments on select photos. But it's important to know how to use the details panel properly. One of the biggest mistakes I see is over sharpening, which can actually call attention to itself and become a distraction in your images, which will take away some of the visual impact. So our goal is sharp photos without being noticeable that sharpening was applied. We're going for a naturally sharp look. So for our example photo, I intentionally chose a photo that could use a bit of sharpening. As you can see, if we zoom this image into 100%, it's slightly front focused. It's actually focusing on the eyelashes rather than the pupil, but it's sharp enough that it can be fixed with some quick tweaks. Coming down into our details panel, there's three main parts that are important to know. The photo preview, noise reduction, and sharpening. The photo preview shows you a preview of your image. You can use this by clicking and dragging to the main focus of your photo for portraits that generally the eyes. And you can do this by clicking right on the part of the image you want it to zoom into. Or you can also use this icon in the upper left hand corner and click right on your image. The benefit of this is you can now see your image zoomed out to see the full image and also see it at 100% zoom, which gives you a better idea of what the sharpening is doing to your photo. Now that we have our photo preview set up, we'll come down into the main adjustments, which are for sharpening and noise reduction. Lightroom will automatically have these settings set to a default sharpening and noise reduction unless you're using a preset that changes these settings. So we'll go ahead and dive into noise reduction first, which is where I like to start. These sliders give you control for both luminance and color noise. With color noise, I usually leave it at Lightroom's default settings, but it's good to know what it's doing just in case you need to adjust higher if you're seeing a lot of color noise in your photos. Typically, you'll only see color noise found in lower light, higher ISO images. And since this image was shot at ISO 100, there's not gonna be a lot of noticeable color noise. But if we come over to this other photo that was shot closer to the end of the shoot where it was getting really dark, the sun had been down for a little while. And because of that, I increased the ISO to 1600 to let in more of that light. Um, so it was really milking the light in the shoot. So, you know, naturally it's going to be a little bit noisier of an image. And if we zoom into 100%, we might not notice it too much, but if we zoom in to 200% and take off the color noise, bring this down to zero, you can see how it has some color noise 
especially like in the shadows of her hair. So that's what that adjustment is doing. But usually, even with those higher ISO lower light images, the default color noise typically gets rid of that. And in here, that works perfectly fine. But if you're getting more color noise than what's showing up in the default, you can always adjust that slider up a bit. Next, we're gonna come into the luminance area of the noise reduction. And this is typically the only slider that I'm ever really changing. And I like to keep it beneath 15 to 20, depending on the image. I want, might want more or less noise reduction, but usually under 20, so that it's not negatively impacting the detail. It's just giving a little bit of smoothness. All right, so next we're going to come up into the sharpening, what we're all here for. Now, in order to know what these sliders are doing, I feel like it's helpful to know how sharpening in Lightroom works. Sharpening doesn't actually make your image more in focus. Rather, what it's doing is increasing the sharpening effect by increasing contrast around the edge details within a photo. The amount slider controls the amount of the sharpening effect from no sharpening to a lot of sharpening. So you can see if we dial this up, and I'm just gonna go really dramatic with these settings for a second so you can really see what it's doing to our photo here. But no sharpening to a lot of sharpening, which is a high amount of contrast applied to the edge details of the photo. So you can see the photo is getting a bit contrastier around those edge details. And this is why if you overdo sharpening, you can sometimes even get kind of a halo effect around your images that looks really unnatural. Going too high with this slider will also add noise to the image, which gives it that little bit of a crispy over sharpened look versus the natural high-end aesthetic that we're going for, which is why it's important to not overdo this. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna dial this all the way up since it makes it easier for you to see how each of the other sliders is impacting the image. And then I'm gonna bring it back down at the end to get it closer to how I'd actually edit it for this image. Next is the radius, which controls the thickness of the edge the contrast is being applied to create the sharpening effect. And as you can see, if we dial that up, uh, those edge details become very thick and it creates even more of kind of a crispy look here because we are just going crazy with this. For the radius, I found that if you have an image that has bigger details, like if it's a close up of a portrait of a face, you might go a little bit higher with the radius versus for a zoomed out shot where your portrait and the person's like really small in the frame, you're going to want a much lower radius um, because you have finer details. We're gonna put this around too since we have a bit of a closer crop on this photo and also since um, the image is a little bit soft and we want to pump that contrast around the eyes. The next area that I focus on is masking. My quick hack and keyboard shortcut there for this is to alt or option click while using this slider and it'll show you which part of the image is being impacted. For most portrait photography, our clients want smooth and youthful looking skin. So we don't want to add any sharpening to the skin that might bring out texture and pores. This is where this masking tool really comes in handy by holding down that alt or option key and sliding, you're able to control what parts of the image that sharpening is applied to. And we just want it on the very edges of the area we want sharp. So like right around like the edges of that eye, but not the skin. So I typically adjust this slider until there's only black over the skin, but I'm still getting really nice detail, like that white highlighted parts. So we're getting that detail without the added texture on the skin. All right, so now that we have this dialed in the way we want, I'll go ahead and bring this crazy amount of sharpening down to a more manageable level, like around here, it looks pretty good. And let's bring our image back at 100% because this is actually zoomed into 200 right now, so it's not going to be as good. And there we have it. So this is looking actually pretty good, but I have one last quick bonus tip. If you're ever wanting to get even more focus on say a single area such as the eyes, uh, I have a little trick using the adjustment brush tool that will make it pop even just a little bit more. But before we do it, it's important to know that this is something I use 
very sparingly. It's not something that I do on many of my images, but is kind of one of those every now and then it might come in handy things, especially for select images like this, where that focus might be just slightly off and we want those eyes to really pop. Um, but if you do it, please just be careful. Don't overdo it and get what's lovingly referred to as the doll eye look. <laughs> I don't want that for your photos. So if we come up into the adjustment bra tool in the upper right hand corner, this is just a custom brush that I made to give those eyes a little bit of pop. But the main elements of this brush are the texture, um, which I have at 50. That's the main thing that's working its magic here. And then I have clarity up just a little bit and the dehaze up just a little bit. You don't want those to be up too high because those start to really impact the blacks and the kind of contrast of your image. I also have the shadows lifted to counteract the clarity in the dehaze slider. Otherwise we would get a very contrasty kind of black look going on. But most of the magic is happening with that texture. And if I come in to her eye right here and just paint in our adjustment, I'm gonna paint it right in all around this eye. There's before and after. And even that might be a little much, so I've come into this tool and just drag that down a little bit. Uh, this is kind of a little hidden area where you can adjust your what you've brushed on after the fact. So I'll lower that just a little bit. Uh, and I think that looks pretty good. So now I'll zoom it back out and we are done. Now seeing this zoomed out, I actually think that the eye we did the adjustment brush on looks a little bit dark. So I might go back in and erase the brush off of the eyelash area where it's giving a bit of a darkening effect. And this is why it's important to look at the image, not only zoomed in, but also zoomed out so that you can see what those adjustments are doing to the image. And I also like to do a little bit of a squint test where I squint my eyes and look and see if there's any distracting areas that are drawing my eye. So I'd either do that quick tweak or I just take this adjustment brush off entirely. But I did want to show this special technique that you can use on select images that need that extra little bit of focus and pop. Hope you guys enjoyed part two of my Getting Sharper Portrait series. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests for future videos, drop them below. I'll be hanging out in the comments. And I'll also be sure to include a link for anybody that's interested in joining me live for my free workshop all on creating more of those images that are irresistibly magnetic to those dream clients. Can't wait to see you there.